and welcome to another Creature Caster assembly video with Emma. Today we're going to be assembling the Nephila Spider Demon variant. And if you know our sculpt, then you'll recognize her because she is an updated version of one of our oldest original sculpts, the Spider Demon. So before you dive into this project, just take note of the shims that have been added everywhere. This is a newer process for us, we're adding more shims than usual, and it's really helping to get a cleaner finish on the model. So I only had to use a knife when I was cleaning up this model, and as you can see, it's really good for not using any sandpaper or anything. So while it may seem a bit more time consuming, in the end it does save quite a bit of time because you don't have to do as much cleaning with sandpaper and other such tools. First of all, as with every project, make sure you have all of the parts in front of you. You can pause the video here if you need to double check. So first off, we're going to complete our base with these pillars, rubble, whatever you want to call them. Make sure to clean the connection point really well and test fit. You can get a really snug fit if you clean all of that extra sprue material off the bottom of the pillars. And make sure that the glue is distributed evenly there so that you don't have to wait forever for it to cure. <laughs> Next we're putting together the two thighs. Make sure that you clean up the middle space really well and clean uh, where her torso will go really well before you attach this. I even test fitted her torso before I glued. Any point where you're connecting three parts should always be test fitted. Now we're attaching the calves and these points need to be cleaned really well because the sprues are attached at the knee. So make sure that you clean the knee before you commit with glue here. The connection point shape is really unique so as long as you've cleaned it correctly and nicely it will slot right into place. Be careful of these spikes too when you're assembling this. They hurt if you press in the wrong spot. And I hope that before you did this, you test fitted those feet into the base because that's going to be our next step is slotting them in there. So make sure these are clean before you commit with glue. Clean the bottom of the feet and make sure they fit nicely in the base. And that's done. But before we put those in the base, we're going to add her loin cloth fit here. And we also need to test the fit of the torso at this point to make sure that everything's fitting nicely. But at this point, we're just attaching the loin cloth. You do have to kind of slot it in uh, behind her right leg. So make sure that you get that correct angle so it's not sticking out like that. Clicks into place. Nice. Now we've got her lower half all done. It should look like that. And now we're going to put that into the base. Make sure that everything is dry before you do this though. And it's important that your glue is distributed evenly there so that it doesn't take forever to dry. Remove any excess and spread it around. You want a nice solid base. Make sure you hold it in place until it's sturdy. And we'll set it aside to dry and move on to the arms and the torso. So I did put the full arms together for this before attaching them to the torso, which I didn't do the first time that I assembled it. And let me tell you, not the greatest choice. I would assemble by putting the biceps to the torso first and then the forearms purely because the forearms are quite spiky, so when you're holding it into the torso, it hurts a bit. <laughs> and this connection point needs to be cleaned really well to get that fit, because that's where the sprue connects. So make sure that all of the excess material has been removed and test fit that piece like crazy, because that also connects to the shoulder pads, so it's another try connection point that you need to be careful with. So again, as I mentioned before, there will be less pain if you attach the bicep to the torso first before applying these forearms. And the fit is, it's pretty easy to get the fit nice in the elbow. So 
the bigger concern is the shoulder. But if you're doing as I do and not as I say, now let's attach the arms to the torso. And you can watch my fingers in pain. <laughs> so obviously it does work to do it like this. I'm just recommending that you do it the way I originally did. Biceps first, then forearms. That will also help you get a cleaner finish on the shoulder bit where those spikes are going to go. So again, this is a tri connection point, which means that you will have to clean up a bit before you attach the shoulder horns. So make sure that you test fit these shoulder spikes multiple times and you might even need to use a little bit of heat to bend it slightly to get it to fit perfectly. And that's just due to the shape. We're also going to test the fit of these back spikes. You have to put them at a quite precise angle, so make sure that you know the angle before you glue it. The angle is clear once you test it a couple times. So when we're attaching these, uh, it's good to use something like tweezers because they're quite pokey. I found it hard to press down for a long time without getting uncomfortable. and. The tweezers also help to get it at the right angle. And again, you may need to use a hair dryer or some hot water to bend it if it's not fitting as nicely as you'd like. Heat is a very useful tool for these pieces that connect to multiple pieces. That being said, try to avoid using heat on pieces you've already glued. And of course, make sure to clean the connection points as best as you can before gluing. Hopefully those horns haven't impaled your fingers. And let's put these horns on now on the back. So like I said, the angle might seem a bit weird, but it is correct. So when you're fitting it in there, it kind of clicks into place and you'll know as long as you've cleaned the connection really well. So we're going to set this aside and move on to the claws. These fit together pretty intuitively. The shapes are very unique to each claw part, so it's hard to confuse them. But I did write the numbers on them so that I wouldn't forget which was which while I was cleaning them. This was the only area where I had to test it quite a bit to get the fit correct. The other parts were pretty easy to clean. If you do clean all of the parts beforehand, just make sure that you keep them with their separate claws. Though it is difficult to confuse them, if you do end up confusing them, that will mess with the angles of the claws. And this model was designed to be quite symmetrical with her claw placement, so if you don't use the correct parts, it will take away from the overall appeal and look of the model. I didn't have time to show it here too, but I did make sure to test fit to the actual body itself. So it's good to do it at this point because if you have to clean anything, it of course becomes a hindrance whenever there's additional parts attached to it. So make sure to clean the torso and these connection points that connect to it before you start gluing all of these claw parts together. You may have noticed that I'm assembling these kind of willy-nilly, not in sequential order, doing two and then two. That's just because I am being a bit lazy about waiting for things to dry, <laughs> and I don't want to affect the hold. But if you're not super lazy, you can just put it together sequentially. It doesn't make a difference much either way, but yeah, preference, whichever matters to you more. If one of the claw parts isn't fitting into the groove nicely, that's pretty much an indication that you haven't cleaned enough of the sprue material away. These claw joints are all unique, so they slot right into place. The only one here, this one, this one wasn't super clear exactly the angle, just because it had a round nub inside, so you can kind of swivel it. If you're having trouble getting the angle right on these, I recommend looking at the pictures on our website or you can look at the turnaround and pause the video and then just compare by holding it uh, like up to the torso.
I don't have any other pointers for these claws, so I'm just going to speed through the last one for you. Alright, so that's our last claw here, and make sure that you've kept track of which ones go where. So number 10 fits into the bottom right, and I'm starting out with that claw. It doesn't matter too much which claws you start with, but they do kind of cross over each other, so I found that putting these two bottom ones on first was the best way about it. Uh, another note is that the reason why I'm putting it on the torso without having put the torso onto the legs yet is I just found it really difficult to glue these on while the torso was attached to the base just because the base is quite heavy and she's not positioned in the center of the base so the balance was a bit difficult to work with when gluing the claws on. Make sure you test fit all of the claws like I just did there as well. That is super important to make sure there's nothing bending in uh, the wrong direction or any major gaps when you're placing them in their holes. You should have tested the fit earlier as I mentioned before we started assembling the claws. You should test fit the anchor part into the back, but if you have to clean it now, it's not the worst. Just annoying. And be careful, of course, <laughs> with balancing this. I was very scared that I was going to drop it and things were going to ping all over the place, but survived. If you are nervous about dropping it, you can first glue it to the base, but like I said, the base kind of gets in the way of fitting it nicely. So that's what it should look like. And let this dry, and then we're going to attach it to the base. So for this part, of course, make sure she fits nicely in there. And then when you're pushing down after you've applied the glue, make sure that you are supporting under her thigh. If you push too hard, then her legs might lose their integrity. So just be careful of that. And make sure that the glue is distributed evenly here. I put a little too much, so I had to take some off so that it wouldn't take a million years to dry. And as you can see, when I first start applying pressure, I pushed on the thigh because I was pushing quite hard. And then just be really careful about where you're pressing. So while that's drying, let's move on to the heads. So the demon head comes with this collar option, and she also has just her regular neck. I need to take pictures of both after this, so I'll be using blue tack as a glue substitute for that. But let's move on to the demon head horns. So these fit pretty intuitively. The only two that can get confusing are the middle ones. They are sequential in the order that you apply them, so if you follow that, it's easy to figure out which goes where as well. With the middle horns, I'll give you a pointer later. Make sure everything is clean at this point, because it will be hard to clean up those horns once they're attached, and use glue pretty sparingly here so it doesn't square out the sides. To get a nice tight fit on these, you will have to remove this brew material and be very careful about not removing the actual outer horn bit, because that will leave gaps. You'll notice here too that I'm going from the outside to the inside. This is just a preference. You could go straight across, but I was finding that if I tried to do it straight across, certain aspects were getting a bit tight. Like certain horns kind of fit behind the other horns, so this is why I was doing it this way. And I made a little mistake there, so there is a little pointy bit on that horn, so be careful when you're pressing down not to squish that pointy bit. It was fixable, it didn't look bad after, but yeah, just be careful, you might accidentally snap it off. So with these middle ones, as you can see, you can kind of confuse them a bit easier than the side ones, but there's that groove that lines up to the middle hole. And it does happen on both horns, as you can see, it goes down into that groove. So if you're finding it hard to find which one goes where, just line up that bottom groove there. 
If your fingers are a little too chunky to fit in these little gaps, I recommend tweezers. And that's done. So now the spider head. So the spider head has all those little things and I didn't cut them off the sprue and I'll show you why in a minute. So first we fit the two halves of the main head together. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> Just make sure that the glue is evenly distributed. I had to remove a little bit. And the reason that I left these things on the sprue is because I found it easier to test fit them and hold them in place. This was a workaround so that I didn't have to use tweezers because tweezers are sometimes a pain. And when you're, if you're using this method, just make sure that when you clip them off, you clip as far away from the actual thing as possible and then just clean it up. You might have to wait for it to dry a bit before you clean it, but because it's such a small connection point, the glue tends to dry a lot faster than your larger connection points. Now, I don't know if this is like a sacrilegious method, so if you are the super hobbyist and you're offended by my strategy, <laughs> I apologize, but it worked really well, so maybe you should try it. <laughs> But you do have to be careful when you're clipping it, as I mentioned before. For the last two, I did find that I had to change the angle of my clippers because I'm right-handed. So I did have to do it backwards a bit, just so that I could clip it nicely without it snapping. And if you do use this method and you're concerned about it being the absolute perfect angle, just make sure that it dries before you start clipping and cleaning it. I could have waited a little bit longer. You'll see that the ones on the right are a slightly different angle than the ones on the left, but I kind of liked that. She's spooky. She doesn't have to be perfect. So after all those are cleaned up and dusted off, pick whichever head you wanted and let's stick it on there. And let's attach her swords now. You can do this earlier in the process, like before you add the claws which is what I originally did the first time that I assembled her. It, I found that it got in the way though when I was attaching the claws because you already have to fit the claws around each other and the sword just added a whole other element. So this was a lot easier in my opinion. And if you, like me, want to be able to switch out the head, the blue tack is not a good solution for long term. You'll have to pin it or magnetize it, which I did start doing, but I just ran out of time. But there you have her and her demon head option and her collar option. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please feel free to reach out. We love to hear from you.